Hi, my friends. We are in our garden in Medjugorje, and I've been asked to give my testimony of conversion. Well, when I say conversion, the beginning of my conversion, because it's a process that lasts the whole life, you know that, lifetime. Just, just a few words about my background. I belong to a very Catholic family. I was brought in, a, you know, in the faith, in the Catholic faith. We are six children. My parents were very practicing. My father would tell us the life of the saints. My mother would pray every day. We would go to Mass every Sunday, maybe sometimes in the week time. We would pray in the family every night together at the foot of the bed of my parents all together. Well, I had a very Catholic background, but, but nevertheless, I did not feel so good. And, uh, you know, with God, I had a little problem. I love God. I wanted to follow him. I wanted, I believed, I believed in God, that he exists, that he's good, that he will help us. But I had a little problem with him. Because, you know, when we mentioned, or the adults would mention the will of God, it was always in the circumstances of um, a drama, or uh, some uh, catastrophe happening, like, you know, well, this woman, she's so young and she's already, she's already a widow. That's so sad, but she has to take it because this is the will of God for her. Uh, this little baby is uh, just a newborn and he's already uh, had terrible disease. He's going to die. That's so sad, but the parents have to take it because the will of God, like that, they take the cross. And um, uh, this man is brilliant. He's very good and things, but now, you know, he's a, he's a cancer. And, um, well, we have to accept that cross, the will of God and things. So, to make a long story short, I couldn't stand the will of God. I said, Lord, I love you, but please spare me from your will because I want to live. I want to be happy. I want to, to have joy in life. I, you know, and uh, I don't want to be, if I follow your will, if I understand well, if I follow your will, I'll be crushed, I'll be depressed, I'll, be, I'll have a very dull and sad life. No, 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 I want to live, so I'll live without you. I'll do my own will, it is more secure. Poor thing I was, innocent. Anyway, so uh, as an adolescent in my school, um, because I went in a boarding school, a religious boarding school, um, sometimes we had free time, and I was uh, taken by some friends, um, my classmates, uh, to do some Ouija board, you know, we would gather, and she said, and one said to me, come, you know, we have a table, the table will move, with a, we call on the spirits, and the spirit can speak to us, give the answers. Wow, I said, well, that's very exciting. I didn't believe that, but uh, they told me, come, come and see. And what I saw, and it works. So I found that very exciting. We would ask questions. I had no idea in those days. That was very prohibited by God in the Bible. And I had no idea that the spirit we would call on were actually demons, terrible demons in pure spirits. I had no idea. Nobody had ever told me that. Even though I was a Catholic, you know, I knew, I knew the gospel. I knew a little less the, the letters, you know, but the Old Testament, very, very little. I was an ignorant. So, um, okay, I go now, I, in my adolescence, during my studies, I kept on, you know, doing this kind of thing going to, uh, to read cards, tarot cards, and read the, the palms of the hand, and uh, Ouija board, and, uh, and uh, divine uh, astrology, divination, and all these things. And um, without any fear, any, it was normal for me, it was nice. And you're reading the Acts of the Apostles. I, I love this book of the Acts of the Apostles. Because, you know, you're apostles. They were led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would tell them, go left, they would go left. Go right, they would go right. And then they would go some, somewhere, and the Holy Spirit, no, no, don't go there because I need you for here. And they were completely led, and they had such a love. They were powerful in action, in miracles, in signs, in words. And uh, they were united, they put all their goods in common. I thought, well, this is incredible. And I said, Lord, where are these apostles today? Where are they in the world of today? 
I'm young, I want to live my faith, but where are they? I don't see such people around me. So Lord, I want to make you a promise. If one day you show me these people, I promise I leave everything behind and I follow them. This is the life I want, like the Acts of the Apostles, with the Holy Spirit. But um, my life uh, turned bad because I went to India not to, to drug, not for drug, not for yoga only thing, no. I went to India to find another kind of society, free society with families, with another type of, you know, not. I wanted to get away from this society of consumerism. I didn't want to enter this mentality. So I went to India and I found something, another mentality, thank God. But there was a snare waiting for me there because I wanted to, to import handicrafts from India, from Nepal, from all these Asian countries to Paris, and that would be my living. And uh, as I was in India, I had an uh, opportunity to speak with a minister, and he said to me, you know, we are ready to, to collaborate with you and to, to include you in our work. We need to know your astral chart. Make sure it is written in your faith, in your life. Otherwise, you know, it will, it will be broken. And, uh, and then he brought me to the old part of uh, Delhi to meet a friend of his who was an astrologer, actually a diviner. And uh, because I, has, I had already started this kind of uh, attraction, um, I was very happy to, to find a very professional astrologer uh, who could uh, speak to me. And so I went and I entered in a, in a kind of very, well, the poor house of uh, Delhi. And a man was waiting for me. This man had a kind of yellow, white beard, but yellow because of old age, you know. And uh, his look didn't please me. You know, his look was well, like, like metallic look and no love, no light, no... I thought, well... And, um, and the, my friend, the uh, minister, started speaking to him and said uh, she came and she'd like to have her astral chart made. So he said, uh, so that astrologer tell, told me, and he was a professional astrologer. He said, he said to me, uh, Mademoiselle, um, Miss, um, you know, I was waiting for you and I have the book of your life in my library. I said, what? I found that very strange, very weird. How could he have the book of my life in his library? But he said to me, okay, sit down and tell me, where were you born? Paris. What time and what day? These three information. And then he started writing things. It had nothing to do with kind of astral chart that I knew in Europe, something very different, but anyway, he's Hindu. <laughs> and um, he will finish that drawing. And then he said, okay, I'll get your book of life from my library. I was stuck there, you know, and I was waiting. And what is that story, you know? And he came back with a kind of, um, of a kind of booklet, yellow, very old, very dirty, very, you know. And he started reading that thing. And I was very surprised because when he started reading, he read from age one, age two, age three, it's for all my years. I was 24 on that day, you know. So it was all my life, and it was, except for detail, all, all, right, all right, you know, it was true. So how, do it, how does he know all that, you know? And um, just a mistake when the, the position of my brother was not exactly as he said, but this is a detail. But I was 24, and then he continued 25, 26, 27, it was my future. So uh, he reached 30. When he had reached 30, he said to me, well, I have another booklet of your life, the rest of your life, and I will get it for you. And he said, no, you stop. Please stop here, stop here. I had enough. Why? Because in his explanation of my life, he would use the planet uh, the, the planets, you know, and he would link every event of my life, whether 
the, my studies, my, my feelings, my sicknesses, my relation to my parents, both my brand sisters, my work, everything was like a consequence of the move of the planets. I said, for example, you know, Jupiter crossed the way of March. And this is why you did this kind of study. And then, then the moon crossed the way of Saturn. And this is why that what happened. In other words, it was explaining that the destiny of my life was dependent of the planets. And I had an incredible shock because I believe in God. God was my father. God was my, my, my creator. He was my savior. And I knew he, he won't lead to me in this life to, to heaven. And he was my friend. He loved me and he created me and he, he knew me and, and he had a plan for the whole world. And so how could I explain that all the stars now, all the stars of the planet were deciding, were deciding for my fate, for my life. And it's like he made me in a few minutes, he made me an orphan, an orphan of God. And a terrible anguish came to my heart. And uh, I was in trouble. I was really troubled. And I couldn't connect with all these things anymore. And when he said, I'm, going to, I'm getting your, the, the, the rest of your life after 30 years old, I said, enough, I'm leaving. And I told my friend, OK, let's go. And we went. <laughs> went Very quickly, we, we went. So they were a little bit surprised. So when I went out, there was a September, big sun, light. It's like going, going to the, from the darkness to the light. But if the light was outside, it was darkness in my heart. Because I, I was like hit by an arrow in deep, in my, deep, deep in my heart, in my soul. And that arrow, I couldn't remove it from me. It was terrible. So I went to my, the house where I lived. I, had, I was in a family. Uh, I was in a Hindu family, and there we were friends, a friend of mine, you know. And I couldn't cope with this uh, experience, and I was crying, and I was crying. That, forget it, all these are stories, you know. I couldn't forget. So when I went back to, to Paris, I, I continued my work. But day by day, I would get down and down and down. And in nine months after this meeting with this astrologer, diviner, my life got really in trouble. And the pain was increasing, the anxiety was increasing, and it, has, it was like, you know, I couldn't sleep well at night. I had, you know, for example, in, in the middle of the night, I would wake up and pronounce words of hatred against this one, against that one, people that I loved. How come this word of hatred came? And uh, things like that, you know, I couldn't eat properly. I was going to skinny and uh, I, I mean, it, my life really, but the anxiety. And it was like, like the hands were clutches, you know, clutches to, to, to take my heart and, and, and press it like this and, and uh, squeeze it. And it was horrible pain. So at the, by the end, one day, my little sister came to visit me and she found me in a horrible state of despair. Horrible state of despair. And when she saw me, she told me, well, I see you're not well, Emmanuel, um, but, you know, I found out an incredible group of uh, young people, a prayer group, actually, from the Charismatic Renewal in, in Paris. And they are extraordinary people. You should see them. They are happy. They are very joyful. They, they, are, they are loving. They are, you know, they are full of light. You can tell they are, they are really in the Lord. And, uh, and they are full of the, of the Holy Spirit. And, and, you know, tomorrow is Pentecost Day. So come with me. There will be a big day of prayer there. So come with me. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will do something for you. And I said, your Holy Spirit is nice but he can do nothing for me. Too late. That was a knot, and she got scared. So ne nevertheless, she left with me the address of that place, and I took the address, and okay. Then I went to bed. I couldn't sleep one minute. 
because the whole night, I, I, you know, I think this is a real thing, the clutches like this, and my heart could not take it anymore, could not take it, the, the pain, the despair, the pain, it was atrocious, it was horrible. So much so that in the morning, you know, in the morning I used to pray. A few words to God like this to start the day. That day, here it was my prayer. Lord, I had enough. My life now has come to an end. And I'm warning you that at 5 p.m. today, I won't be there anymore. I'll kill myself. It's enough. I'm over. I'm done. That was my morning prayer. It's not a very nice praise, you know. And then I turned around in my apartment. I said, what shall I do? I don't know why I said five. I don't know. I said five. Okay. So I had my plan. So, um, and I said, okay, I better go to, to my sister. I told me this group. Then I thought, instead of being in this, my, my apartment like this, I will go to meet my sister there at the place that indicated me where there is a prayer group. So I went. When I arrived there, my Lord, there were like young people, full of light, full of joy. And you can tell the kind of relationship they had with one another, respect, love, delicacy, uh, light and, and laughter and uh, freedom. And oh, I said, here they are, those that I have been looking for for so many years. Here they are. I found them too late, too late. They are in their own heaven and I'm in hell already. There's a ditch between them and me and the ditch that I cannot cross. It's too late. I'm already, I'm already dead. I'm already dead inside. Possible. So I, I remain in that place this, that morning, lunch, and, and then now I was following my little sister like a, like a puppy dog, you know, and I, I was crying and everybody was noticing me, I was crying, this desperate, and I could feel that they was praying for me. Anyway, so at 3.30 there was a prayer meeting, like in the morning, and um, so we came in a circle, I was near my little sister, and I was crying, and I echoed all their prayers like, oh Lord, my, my life will never be long enough to praise you. And, uh, and my echo was, as uh, mine has last enough time, I'm, I'm, I'm over. You know, all, I responded all these things like that. So what happened around, around 4.34, 4, yeah, 4. Um, anyway, um, a lady came late and she came, she was in my back, so she couldn't see me, I couldn't see her. But I heard that she came, she, she was late. And she was hardly seated, that she started screaming. And she said, brothers and sisters among us, excuse me, I'm still emotional, it's so many years later, but I will never forget that. So, so here what she said, dear brothers and sisters, there is a person among us who is walking to her death. This person has let the enemy deceive her and she has done what displeases God. She has practiced Ouija board and divination and Satan has bounded her. But Christ has the power to deliver her from the hands of the enemy and to give her life back to her. She can come to us and we will pray for her in the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And the whole assembly was just screaming, you know, very strongly. The whole assembly and the whole assembly was shocked. But you can imagine how I reacted to that. I thought, my gosh, she's naming everything I did. It's me. She's talking about she's talking about me. So I started being agitated on my chair, couldn't couldn't wait to the end of the prayer so that I may meet her, you know, and go to her and said, what have you, what have you said? Is it me? Or what, what's the matter with me? And so uh, the prayer ended. I ran to her and, you know, this kind of true apostle of the Lord is not a matter of politeness. How, how are you doing? How beautiful you are? No, no. What have you done? She said. What have you done? We have gone to the camp of the enemy, to the field of the enemy, and you have done what, what is uh, 
forbidden by God. And then she, she explained to me, and, the, and, uh, and she saw my despair, she saw my state of soul, she saw that death had already taken a hold on me. So, so she asked me the question. She said, but, are you a believer? I said, yes, I believe in God. Do you believe that Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has the power to deliver you from all the enemies that you have sheltered in your own heart with your wrongdoings? You know, it was the first time in my life, I was 25, it was the first time in my life that I saw a person with such a faith. She had no doubt. She had no doubt that Jesus could today, for me personally, um, deliver me from my enemies that were ruining my heart and my life. And she said, do you believe he can do that? And I thought, wow, what a faith. And I said, yes, I believe. Uh, my voice was a little weak because it's more that I, I wanted it to be fr true that more than what I, I did. But I said, I believe. But then I said, you know, they have done so much harm in my heart, in my soul. It, I'm, I'm so wounded. I'm so bleeding. I, they have destroyed so much within me that, uh, that I still want to die because this is too much for me. I can't take that pain. And she looked at me, in a, astonished, you know, and she looked at me and said, Emmanuel, don't you believe that if Jesus has the power to free you from the hands of the enemy and put you in his light, don't you believe that he has also the power to heal you? You know, I have never seen such a faith. And I thought, but this is the faith of the apostle. This is the faith of Peter, of Paul, of John, of James, of Philip. This is, we are there. And, uh, and I said, yes, I believe. So she said, okay, sit down there. She saw that I was like very weak. So I sat on a kind of bench to a beautiful garden, springtime, it was June actually. And it was Pentecost day. And I sat and she, she called like two, three other people to pray with her for me. And she started uh, praising God for so many things that he had done and the beauty of God, the beauty of the stars, the beauty of, of his work and the beauty of human being and the, the beauty of his works and praise, 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 thanksgiving. And, the, and she started singing, singing in tongues. I never heard that before. I thought, what is that? You know, and uh, all new for me. And uh, they prayed and prayed. And uh, at a certain moment, she asked the demons to leave me. And she named them one by one. She named them one by one. You get out of it. Get out of it. Of course, in French. I <laughs> I never seen that before, you know. So I was seated. And at a certain moment, she thanked the Lord. And she said to me, we are finished. It's over. I had felt nothing. No emotion, no trembling, no crisis, no... No, no crying. No, I had felt absolutely nothing. But when I got up from my bench, I did that. As somebody who has lost his wallet, you know, where is it? Because the pain had gone, the despair had gone, these this horrible hands, the crutches the ground, gone, finished. And I had an incredible encounter with Jesus. It was like he had come to my ditch of death with all those thorns and things. He had taken upon his own body my wounds, my, my thorns, my, my bleeding. He has all covered his body with but to deliver me. And he let me up out of that ditch. And it was Jesus. So like a Rivers of clean water came to my heart. This, in encounter with Jesus, the life, I am the life, he said. I'm the life, I'm the light. Wow, the true Jesus, the true Jesus from the gospel. I could understand who was Jesus. And I understood that I had such a poor image of Jesus before. 
I thought I believed. I thought I believed in him. I thought I, I knew him. <laughs> I had such a poor, poor uh, image of him. And now I've this encounter with the true Jesus, the true Jesus of the gospel, the powerful Jesus, the loving Jesus, the uh, j merciful Jesus, you know. Wow! My brand sister, you know what? It was 5 o'clock p.m. Can you imagine? I said to Jesus, Jesus, you know, it's 5. I had an appointment with death, but you came. Life came to me through you. So Jesus, I'm telling you, from now on, my life is yours. Take my life, I will live for you alone. Take my life, you gave me life back, this life from now on until you take me to heaven, my life is for you. And that day, at that moment, I gave my life to Jesus. After I made my vows and all these things, but that day, that five o'clock, I said to Jesus, from now on, I'm yours because you are just too beautiful, you are too good. I, that's the love you have, it's what I want. And your friends here, who live from you, who live with you, that's what the life I want. So to make a story short, because I already spoke too much, um, I remained in that prayer group in Paris, and they helped me to complete my healing. They taught me a lot of uh, things about God, about Jesus, about the, the, the life in the spirit, I received also the, the baptism of the Spirit. And you know, I told in the beginning of my testimony, I said, I was, I was afraid to do the will of God because for me, the will of God was a, a bunch of catastrophes to happen. But you know what the Holy Spirit did in my heart on that day? He made me understand that was a lie from the enemy because the will of God is life. And I decided from that day on to have with, you know, there is a, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that the holy fear of God. To, you fear to hurt the one you love, you know. You fear to displease the one you love. And I was so careful to, to do his will, to, to, to try to, to walk in his path and according to his word and also the, the teaching of the church, the commandments of God and uh, the gospel. And the, so that was the beginning, beginning of my conversion because as I said, Conversion is a process of every day, and I'm far from completing it so far. But I want, I want to point another thing also for you to understand. You know, I said to that lady, her, her name was Andrea, Andrea, how come this, this astrologer could know my past? She said, normal, you know, he's an angel. The demons are angels. They see you. They know your past much better than you. They know exactly where you were born. They, they see everything. They're angels. So they have a lot of information, they are very intelligent, there are a lot of information that we, that we lost, we, we don't know. So it was easy for him to see what happened in your life. But he had no, um, he had no knowledge of your future. But his intelligence, he's smart, he's um, smart, yes, like a serpent. So sometimes they guess. Knowing your past, your personality, your way of thinking, your, your surrounding, your background, they guess in what direction you are going. And said, so, you are so naive. You don't think that he had the book of your life for so many uh, centuries in his library. But what happened is that he pretended he was reading. He was just pretending. It was fake. Because what happened, Satan, his master, was telling him what was your past. So he was not reading nothing. It's it just, he was inspired by Satan to know your past because Satan told him. And these people, they, they are instrument of, of the devil to destroy the other ones. And because of that snare, because knowing my past, I thought he will know my future. And that's the snare for so many people because they see, they, they hear something right about their past that come from the angel, dark angel, the bad angel, you know. And they think naively that uh, they will be told their future. It's just ridiculous. It's a big lie. Satan is the father of the lies. So, as a matter of fact, I can tell you that the, the prophecy that the astrologer told me about my future never happened. Completely wrong from A to Z. 
not one piece of what he said was realized because it was just a word of death that in, it's like a curse he injected in me. Why? Because I crossed the threshold of his house to, to consult him. That was my sin. Even if I was ignorant, it was my sin to transgress the word of God. And then he easily could crush me and lead me to death. He want, she said, he wanted to destroy first your heart and second your life. And he was almost done. You know, thank God Jesus came. Thanks to the prayers of my parents. My parents always prayed every day for all of us. I want to underline that because for the parents, you know, without my parents, I don't know what I would have been, you know. Anyway, so I, I learned my lesson and I learned that the life with Jesus is the best. And uh, I had the great grace also. I continue my work of uh, importing in Paris those handicrafts from India. I returned to India. I even met Mother Teresa. Thank God she blessed me and uh, in Calcutta. And uh, I, I started also having a new family with all these uh, uh, people from the prayer groups. And uh, I met beautiful priests, beautiful holy people. And uh, my life changed completely. Of course, I, I told my brother also who was in trouble. I told, look what happened to me, and he also joined that prayer group, another of my brother, and the, so the whole family was renewed. The whole family was renewed. Listen, very good. So I want also now, as a conclusion, you know, I said um, that this lady t taught me that I had gone into the field of Satan. I want to read for you this passage from Deuteronomy, chapter 18, that she mentioned to me to explain that everything that I did in that kind of uh, activity, black activity, uh, was not only prohibited by God, but an abomination in the eyes of God. An abomination in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, means an adultery, a spiritual adultery. You, you were with God and then you, you go to adultery with other gods, you know, and this is, uh, this is death, you know, this is death. So let me read that for you. So it's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 to 12. When you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his own son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination a soothsayer, or an augur, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominable practices, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. That's it. So my last word is that, dear friend, this is a word of life. The word of God is a, a light before our path, before our feet, you know. And we, if we follow the word of God, we are secure. God is our refuge. He is our shield. He is our protection. He is our stronghold. He is everything. And in this world, it's so confused, you know, you, you are tempted by a thousand things. An invitation of reading your palms, reading your, your, um, your, your cha chart, reading uh, whatever, you know, divination and astrology is everywhere. You, so you go to a gas station and everywhere you, you, are, you have your horoscope. This is all lies, deadly lies, deadly lies. So... Um, invite you to choose Jesus, to choose the path of light, to, so, to choose the word of God, the word of life, to save your children and your grandchildren from big mistakes, that they may not do the mistakes I did. I paid almost with my life. And oh, today I know many young people commit suicide because they have been in that kind of field. Many, 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 many. More suicide, more death by suicide than from a war, for a car accident. 
that's it, you know. So I want to finish this uh, testimony in thanking the Lord for the day he saved my life and he continued to save my life and he wants to save your life. He wants to take from where you are, wherever you are, whoever you are, to take in his arm, in his embrace, to make you feel how much he loves you, how much he wants you in the light, how much he wants your happiness, your joy, I want how much he wants to save you. And you cannot imagine how good is his love, how good is his love. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day you visited me unexpectedly, that the last thing I could expect from that day, but it was the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit had inspired those people. And you put me in that group of your friends and uh, you saved my life. You shed your blood to save me. You shed your blood to take me with you. You shed your blood so that I may taste your love, taste a little, like the antechamber of heaven. And you gave me brothers and sisters in the church. And I thank you, Lord. I, as uh, I said before, my life will not be long enough to praise you and to thank you enough. So, Lord, you are my Lord. You are my spouse now. You are my light. You are my love. I thank you so much. And I pray to you for all brothers and sisters who are listening to me now, that they too may experience your love because it's just too, too good. Too good. Thank you, Lord, for being what you are. Thank you. <laughs>